Hey, this is Ken Rosever. We're going to talk about graphing quadratic equations or quadratic functions. There are a variety of approaches one can take to graph quadratic functions. One of the basic ones is finding the vertex and then getting a sample of points to the left of it or to the right of it and then using symmetry, filling in the parabola to whatever extent I feel like until I'm done. That's the, the method that I call a basic method. It's a good one to go with. So again, what is it? You find the vertex. Once you find the vertex, you get some points to the left, get some points to the right, and you graph those. That's pretty simple. Another method that I like and is really a great method but I don't have enough time to talk about in this video perhaps another one is a method that we use in college algebra and pre-calc it's a transformation method it entails getting an equation out of this form here into a form that looks like that and then because we recognize that this is a transformation of this very simple equation up there we just take the pattern of this equation and move it to a new position and we either stretch it or compress it and that's how I got this result that you see over here very simple very straightforward but not necessarily the one I want to talk about in this video I call that the advanced method the method I want to talk about is kind of an intermediate approach it's valuable I feel because it uses points that are often asked for in word problems. Um, word problems, the points are intended to be interpreted and have a real world meaning. So oftentimes in a word problem, they'll ask you to find the X or Y intercept um, and the maximum or the minimum. Well, those are the, the points that we're going to use to graph our function here. So let's begin. I'm not going to use an applied problem here because I'm just demonstrating the method. I'm not interpreting anything. So we're just going to graph this thing. We'll work with this equation or this function. And I didn't write it in function notation, but I think you understand that it is a function because each x maps to one y. Let's see. Uh, first thing I want to do is I want to find the axis of symmetry. So the axis of symmetry is understood is understood to be at x equals negative b over 2a. Whenever we have a parabola or a quadratic in terms of x, then the axis of symmetry for it will be at x equals negative b over 2a. So these values up here are important. Um, a is 1, b is 2, c is negative 8. We're going to use a and b here. Negative b is negative 2 over 2a, 2 times 1 is negative 1. So the equation of the axis of symmetry is x equals negative 1. So that's a vertical line and I have a vertical line already prepared. It's right here and I'm going to move it to where x equals negative 1. There it is. Right there, every point on that line, x equals negative 1. So let me go like this and I'll label it x equals negative 1. Here's the, the y-axis, a.k.a. x equals 0. And here's the x-axis, also known as y equals 0. So we found the axis of symmetry. Somewhere on it is the vertex. Where? Well, each input produces only one output. So this parabola only crosses that line in one place. So if I want to find where it crosses, I plug in negative 1 for x. So I'm going to plug in negative 1 in for x and I get 1 minus 2 minus 8 which is negative 9. Another way of writing this, let me erase the y, is I can say f of negative 1. So f of negative 1 was 9. So our vertex is at negative 1 comma negative 9. Because finding the vertex normally takes those two steps, 
The vertex is often expressed as an ordered pair with x as negative b over 2a and y as f of negative b over 2a. And I think that makes sense. You get the x from the axis of symmetry, which is the negative b over 2a, and then you do f of that x to find y. All right, let's graph this. Negative 1 comma negative 9. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. There it is. Ah, oh, don't do that. Okay. Now I want to get some other points. <clears throat> when we're doing word problems, like I said, they often ask for the x and y intercepts. So I'm going to go to the y intercept next. So how do you find a y intercept? Well, you should know that from graphing linear equations, that to find a y intercept, you set x equal to 0. And you do that because the equation of the y axis is x equals 0. So basically, you're finding f of 0. You're setting x equal to 0. Because 0 squared plus 2 times 0 and you're left with negative 8 because both of these terms go away. So for quadratic equations, the y-intercept is always going to be c. I think it's pretty self-explanatory. You plug in a 0 here, first term is gone. You plug in a 0 here, the second term is gone, and you're left with f of 0 equals c. So 0 comma c is always the y-intercept. In this case, 0 comma negative 8. So let me plot that right there. And this point, because it is not, the vertex is a buy one get one free. And I'm going to put that point over there because that is its symmetric buddy. Next I want to figure out if this thing has any x-intercepts. Now it should be pretty clear because I've already graphed three points that this thing is opening up. So this is going to cross somewhere, right? Over here, over here. It's going to cross. So it definitely has two x-intercepts. But what if, let's say, what if I didn't know that yet? What if I hadn't graphed anything over there? How could I tell? Well, the answer to that is right here. If the leading coefficient is positive, then the graph opens up. If the leading coefficient is negative, then the graph opens down. Well, that by itself is not enough information to tell you that there are two x-intercepts. But we have this other piece of information here. We have the y-intercept. So the y-intercept gives us one point. If it's down there and the parabola is opening up, then it's either like this, it's opening up, or maybe it's like this. But either way, there's going to be an answer there. And if there's one there by symmetry, there's one over there. Or there'll be an answer here and by symmetry and another over there. So we're going to get two. Okay. If that logic doesn't make complete sense to you, it's okay. Because our method for finding an x-intercept has not changed since we did it with linear equations. How do you find an x-intercept? same way we always have. Plug in 0 for y. And when we do, we get a quadratic which is equal to 0, which you should know is something we solve by possibly factoring or completing the square or quadratic formula. So let's try by factoring first. So we're looking for, because this is 1, two factors of negative 8 that add up to 2. So because it's negative 8, they have different signs. So 1 is plus, 1 is minus, and they are 4 and negative 2. By 0 factor property, we set each of those equal to 0. I don't like writing it that way. So x plus 4 equals 0, or x minus 2 equals 0. So x equals negative 4, or x equals 2. x equals negative 4, or x equals 2, are solutions to this equation up here. So if we want y to equal 0, if we want y to equal 0, then x has to equal negative 4. Um, let me go like this. Or x had to equal 2. Either of those inputs will produce an output of 0. So those are our two x-intercepts. So we have 1, 
that's right there, and we have one that's right there. And if that's not enough points, and we want to get one more, um, between the y-axis and this x-intercept, we could plug in x equals 1, right? So we could try to find f of 1, and that would be 1 plus 2 minus 8, which would be negative 5. And that would give us that point, and it's buy one get one free, so we get that one as well. And so that would be 7 points. That's a pretty good graph. Let's zoom in, and let's see how well I can graph this. A uh, little mess up there. And let's just clean it up a little. So that's our resulting parabola. And what was that the parabola for? y equals x squared minus 2x. Oh no, plus 2x minus 8. So let's review, and then we'll go. Um, first thing. If we're graphing a parabola using this method, we're going to start by finding the vertex and the axis of symmetry. And we do that by getting this, comma, this. Where the first part is our axis of symmetry, and the whole thing is our vertex. Having found that, we then get a y-intercept, and if the y-intercept is not the vertex, we get a symmetric pair. So how do we get the y-intercept? Set x equal to 0, and so it's always going to be 0, comma, c. After that, we get the x-intercept, or x-intercepts, if there are any, and we do that by setting y equal to 0. And so we have an equation that says ax squared plus bx plus c equals 0, or 0 equals ax squared plus bx plus c. It doesn't matter. Um, which can be solved by factoring, using zero factor property, completing the square, which I didn't do here. Quadratic formula, which if you forgot what that is, it's down here below. If you have something like this, you solve it using this. And a fourth method, um, as allowed by your instructor, uh, if you're estimating it, estimates are good in real world problems. You can estimate the x-intercepts by using uh, some functions that are available on your graphing calculator. So that's pretty much it. Um, in reality, though, if you're asked to graph, you're, you're not really likely going to get to use a graphing calculator. You're probably going to be limited to these top three uh, methods, and you'll have to probably do it by hand. So no worries, though. It's not a lot to remember. And I think uh, you can do it with a little practice. All right, good luck. I hope this was helpful. Mr. R, signing out. Bye-bye.